So welcome to lesson number three, Green Belt Six Sigma program series. My name is Ajit Sharma from Bob Cash University. So today we are going to see in lesson number three, the relationship between Sigma and Sigma level. So before we go into the details, let's have a quick difference between Sigma and Sigma level. In our previous videos, we had seen that sigma is nothing but standard deviation and it's a name given to this symbol which is the small letter in Greek called sigma. So it's nothing but the standard deviation which is the measure of variation in the process parameter around the process mean. That means Standard deviation gives us an idea how much the data is varying above the mean and below the mean. So it's a measure of variation around the mean. It gives us an idea, it gives us a uh, measurement of the spread around the mean, right? Whereas sigma level is nothing but a measure of goodness of a process. It's a measure of goodness of a process. That means how good my process is. It's an indicator of that. Now, since we have seen in my previous videos that unwanted variation is the focus area of Six Sigma and that is what we want to reduce. That means high variation is not good for us. So lower the standard deviation lower is the variation. So lower the standard deviation, lower is the variation. That means the data is more and more close to the mean because uh, standard deviation gives us an idea of how far or how close the data is from the mean. So lower the standard deviation, lower is the variation, which is a good thing. So if, is, if, if it is a good thing, that means lower standard deviation, is better for my process. Lower the standard deviation in a process, the better the process is. We want as low as possible the standard deviation because lower the standard deviation means lower variation, lower variation, which is good for the process. Whereas sigma level, as we saw, is a measure of goodness of the process. And we have also seen that higher the sigma level, the more good the process is because it's a measurement of goodness of a process. The higher the sigma level is, the more good the process is. That means, because all of us want a good process, that means higher the sigma level in my process, the better it is. We will shortly see what exactly means uh, by the sigma level and how do you measure it. But at this moment, you should uh, remember that higher the sigma level, the better it is. So what are the two things that we want in our process? Lower standard deviation. I want lower standard deviation as less as possible and higher sigma level as high as possible. So that means there is a somewhat inverse relationship between standard deviation and sigma level. We want standard deviation as low as possible and we want sigma level on the contrary as high as possible. So that means the standard deviation is inversely proportional to sigma level. That's the takeaway from this slide, right? Now, we will see in detail what exactly is the physical meaning of sigma level. We have all studied this uh, normal distribution curve in my previous videos. So this is the same normal distribution curve or the bell-shaped curve or the Gauss curve from the previous videos. And this line is the process mean. This is the average of the readings of whatever parameter you are measuring about the process. So this is the process average or the process mean of the parameter that you care for. 
Now, this is the upper specification customer limit. Let's say the customer has said that this is my limit beyond this. If you get the parameter which I have requested for, I will reject the product. This is the upper specification limit. And this is the lower specification limit defined by the client. And this, as we all know from the normal distribution curve that we saw in the previous videos, this is nothing but the data, the groups of data. Now, the distance between the process mean, the distance between the process mean and the customer specification limit the number of standard deviations that I can put into this distance, the number of standard deviations I can put into this distance, which is from the process mean to the customer specification limit, is called as the sigma level. So what is sigma level? The number of standard deviations that I can fit between the process mean, this one, and the customer specification limit. So if I can fit, let's say, depending upon the value of the standard deviation, if I can fit two standard deviation between this uh, line and this line, that means my sigma level of the process is two sigma. So that means, in a six sigma process, in a six sigma process, you can fit in six standard deviations between this process mean and the customer specification limit. Right? So, what does that mean? That means if the standard deviation value is higher, naturally you will fit less and less standard deviations between this distance. And if the standard deviation is as thin as possible, the thinner it is, you can fit more and more standard deviations between this distance. Right? Fat people need more space to sit and thin people need less space to sit on the same area. So, it is a similar analogy. Right? If the standard deviation is less, I can fit more number of standard deviations between this line. So, the number of standard deviations I can fit between the process mean and the customer limit is called the sigma level. Right. Now, the question arises on the screen that we see the specification limit are equidistance from the mean. You see, this distance is same as this distance because this customer has got or given us equilateral limits. That means upper limit defined by the client is same as the lower limit defined by the client from the mean. Right? But every time in practical life, this is not the case. Sometimes the lower limit can be less or the upper limit can be less. So then what do I do? I take this one or this one. In this case, the customer limit is same from the process mean. So I can either fit in standard deviations here or fit in standard deviations here. But what if the customer specification limits are not equidistant from the mean? Then what do we do? This case, for example, the upper specification limit, there is a high tolerance, whereas lower specification limit, there is very less tolerance. So in this case, always the nearest specification limit from the process mean is considered. Whichever distance is less, whichever distance is less is considered for calculating the sigma level. So in this case, for example, this distance is less. So I will find out the number of standard deviations that I can fit between the process mean and the nearest and the nearest specification limit. This is the nearest 
specification limit to the process mean. So in that case, I will not consider this. I will consider this one because this line, this customer specification limit is more near to the process mean. So number of standard deviations that I can fit in, in this area, yeah, sorry, in this distance will be the sigma level of this process. So I put a tick mark here. So this is the distance that I'm going to consider for calculating the sigma level. So what do we learn? We learn that as sigma, uh, uh, um, lev uh, sigma value decreases, which means as the standard deviation value decreases, I can fit more and more number of standard deviation into the distance between the nearest specification limit and the mean. If I can fit in more number of standard deviations, that means I will have higher sigma level because sigma level is the number of standard deviations you can fit in between the mean and the nearest specification limit. So this also is in line with our previous slide which says standard deviation is inversely proportional to the sigma level. Lower the standard deviation, more standard deviation you can fit in the distance and higher will be the sigma level. I hope it is clear. You have any doubts? Please uh, put a comment below and I will reply to you as soon as possible. So, lower the standard deviation, higher the sigma level. So, in the next video, which is very important, dear viewers, please do not miss lesson number four. We will be seeing the very basic statistics before going into the actual phases of Six Sigma journey. We are going to start the DMAC now. I will introduce that in lesson number five. Before that, you must have an understanding, a clear understanding of basic statistics. Till now, you have already learned a lot. You are already quite geared up for going into the DMAC process. But the lesson number five is very important. We, I, I will tell you the very basic statistics which you will require in the next phase of our Six Sigma journey towards excellence. Right? So to get lesson number four, you need to subscribe, please. And that way you will know as soon as possible when we release the video. After you subscribe, please press on this subscribe button, this um, bell icon, so that you are notified immediately as we release the next video. Thank you very much. Take care. Looking forward to see you in lesson number five. It's Ajit Sharma. Bye for now.